Sunday for the mayor of the great city of Dallas. It's time for us to unite around common goals, wealth creation for all, safe neighborhoods for everyone, and better educational opportunities. But at the same time, we must protect the culture and history of our very unique neighborhoods without displacing the residents and businesses who have anchored our great city for decades. It's time to make our great city bigger than what it has become. It's time to make Dallas a priority. That's what I plan to do in this campaign, and I hope you'll join me. And please join me in tuning in to the Commish Radio Show. Thank you. All right, now that's the way we come in with the intro. Now that is the way we come in with the intro. Larry, now that was a lot better than the last intro we did, man, because the only reason why the last one wasn't as good as this one was because you wasn't in it. <laughs> you wasn't in it, man. Man, uh, tell me, man. This, this is you, you. You killed it with that, man. You must be doing this before. You got good people there. They were coaching well. Man, 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 man. Well, we got Larry Castro, who's running for uh, Dallas mayor. As as you know, on the Commission Radio Show, we've often said we're the best radio show from Como to the Congo and now to Korea. But we are making Dallas a priority, and that's the reason why we brought. Mr. Larry Castro, who is, again, running for mayor. Tell us about yourself, man. Ed, uh, my name's Larry Castro. I have spent most all of my professional career serving the residents and citizens of Dallas. Uh, I'm a, a resident, or uh, not a resident, but I'm from West Texas. Went to school at Texas Tech, and then almost immediately uh, out of uh, college and law school, went to work for the city of Dallas as its legislative director. And in 2016, I was honored to be appointed a city attorney by the city council and mayor. Uh, we were uh, in the middle of some crises and, and uh, I was honored to uh, be selected to help guide us through some of those uh, now, problems. You said you were from West Texas, wasn't you? I am. Sweetwater. Sweetwater. Little town between Abilene and Lubbock for those. Abilene and Lubbock, Lubbock, that's where they have a Sweetwater Roundup? <laughs> Ed, the Rattlesnake Roundup. <laughs> if, if, it needs to be on everybody's bucket list, bucket list, but just once, you know. Now, what, tell us about it, and then we'll go to <laughs> Dallas, okay, All the right. Rattlesnake sure. Roundup. What is the Rattlesnake Roundup? They collect a lot of snakes, okay. put them in pits, and you go and watch them. Uh, maybe uh, participate in a little bit of uh, Rattlesnake Roundup food. And uh, there's not much to it other than that, Ed, but just being surrounded by a thousand snakes is... is Something everybody just uh, maybe should see once. So you've done that before. So I have. That's I have. crossed that off your bucket list. Thing. Yeah. So where'd you go to school? At? Uh, Texas Tech. Texas Tech. Uh, I was an engineering guns undergrad up. and guns guns up Red Raiders. We were kind of the uh, black sheep out there in West Texas, but uh, uh, then uh, stayed and then stuck around for uh, law school uh, and was fortunate uh, to to uh, uh, end up in Austin. I began uh, work in the Texas Senate, heading up a, a state Senate office, and was there. I had the opportunity to actually work with some of the city of Dallas lobbyists at that time, uh, and including Ron, former Mayor Ron Kirk. Uh, and they were going on to do different things, and uh, I was asked if I would like to uh, consider employment with the city of Dallas and heading up its legislative agenda. And uh, what was supposed to be a short gig turned into a labor of love and stuck with it for 25 years until 2016 when I became the city attorney. What do you think your greatest achievement as a, in the legislature was when you were there? I think the greatest achievement was there is this ongoing competitiveness and battle for allocation of resources. And probably my greatest achievement, I think, was getting Dallas its fair share in taxes returned to the city. That's not one singular thing, but over the span of decades, just fighting to get uh, the residents of Dallas a, a better shake uh, in the allocation of resources. Now, you started off there, and then, uh, as I know, you, you were a city attorney, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Now, what is the, now, I know what a city attorney is, but for the people that are listening out there, what does a city attorney do? We have one of the most diverse legal staffs. We had about 105 attorneys. And you go, why do you need that many attorneys? And, and it was my job to head up that office. 
but we cover just about every practice of law that there is to cover uh, under the sun. Because if you think about it, the city attorney's office for Dallas is the legal representation for the corporate entity of the city of Dallas, which then in turn represents about 1.3 million people. So you handle land use regulations, contracts, economic development negotiations, but you also handle the litigation, defending the city in lawsuits. Uh, we have a lot of employees out there and once in a while a dump truck is gonna bump into someone. Uh, and so it was our job to defend the city. We had about 12 different departments within the city attorney's office, each specializing in an area of law. It's like a big law firm. It is a very big law firm. That's true. And that's, I was the head of that law firm. Now you had this job for how long? How long for two years. Two years. I was appointed in uh, 2016 and I just recently resigned in 2018 at the end of my two year contract period and uh, to move on to do other things. Now you're smiling because you know the question that's going to come next, why? You had a job, and this time, you know, most government workers want to go to work. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give a dig to the federal uh, employees that are now uh, out with day number 22 of this Trump uh, shutdown. Uh, but meanwhile, you had a job working as the head of one of the largest law firms in the city of Dallas, uh, in Dallas, rather, the meaning the city of Dallas. Why resign and why run for, for mayor? Well, I certainly didn't resign because I didn't like the job. I loved this city. I loved being city attorney, and I loved some of the challenges that we were able to overcome and address. Uh, but the bottom line is, it is because of my love for this city, I felt that I could be in, be in a position to do more. Uh, there are some limitations as city attorney. You're following the directive of council. It would be inappropriate to sort of step into those political weeds, but it's the political weeds uh, that I felt I needed to step in to to take this city to another level. In taking the city to another level, what do you think is, is going to take it uh, outside of obviously us electing it? Well, listen, we live in a great city, and the city of Dallas I believe is a great city, but we've hit some roadblocks and there's some frustration. And I think my skill set is identifying those roadblocks and then uni unifying people to get rid of those roadblocks. And some of those roadblocks are keeping us from creating wealth across the entire city and allocating resources across the entire